Yo, what's up guys? It's uh, Eric Cavalos here again. So I'm gonna be showing you guys a key thing that you have to understand in order to start to scale to you know, 10, 20, 30K a month if you are doing sales yourself. Now, I do recommend that you do sales yourself uh, just because you could get sales skills because life is sales, uh, everything is sales, like girls are sales. Um, so you have to understand this key point. Otherwise, you're gonna be sacrificing potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars in, uh, in missed deals because you don't understand this point. So uh, just watch through the whole thing and uh, just be a sponge. <laughs> just like absorb everything. So yeah, take care. If you think about objections, right? Objections, they work on a scale, right? So what I mean by scale is like, a lot of people think that if someone says they want to think about it, they think that like, that's that and the objection just can't be overcome. But the, the thing is, is that objections can work on a scale. Let's just take an arbitrary number here from 100 to zero. So one person might have an objection, like I want to think about it, but they've got a lot of certainty, but just a little bit of doubt, which means that their objection would stand at this strength, which is a quite a low strength, which means it's quite easy to overcome. However, another person might have an objection, the same objection, I want to think about it, but have a lot of doubt and not much certainty, and therefore their objection has a lot more strength. So the first mistake that people make with objection handling is thinking that objections are uniform in their strength. It's like he said he wanted to think about it. It's like, okay, but did he want to think about it like at 5% think about it or 95% think about it or just 30% or was he 70% certain? Like where does the certainty and doubt levels lie? And that's the first thing to recognize with objection handling is not all objections are created equal. They're all different. And they, although they sound the same, and seem the same, they're made up of different levels of certainty and doubt. Now, if an objection is down here, then it doesn't require many rebuttals to overcome it, right? And if an objection is up here, it will require more rebuttals. Both can be overcome. All the, the difference between down here and down here is that this one can be overcome much faster than, than this one, which might be overcome here. An example of this is I had an objection of someone saying they wanted to talk to their sister before buying. I gave them one rebuttal and then they caved in and bought. Another example of this is someone saying they didn't have the money to purchase the program. I gave them 14 rebuttals and then they bought. So that's the first thing to realize is you have to be willing to go to this place here because most objections will be up here. And so if you don't try and handle someone's objection 10 times, you haven't really tried. And this is the first lesson in objection handling is it's not good enough to say, oh, well, what do you want to think about? And then they say, oh, I just want to take some time to look it over and mull it over. Okay, no worries. Have a good day. Damn, I didn't overcome that objection. You didn't even try. So you need to be willing to dig your heels in and set what I'm going to call a frame. So this is the next point of objection handling. So you have your frame, right? And you have the prospect's frame, right? Which is their frame. These are supposed to be perfect squares. Just bear with me. So in an objection, right? In a sales conversation, you need to have a frame of conviction, right? And they need to have a frame of, well, they probably won't need to have it, but they'll have a frame of doubt. So when a prospect raises an objection, oh, I want to think about it. They enter the frame of doubt, which means they personally have stepped into a mode of conversation that inhibits their ability or their perceived ability to move forward. I want to think about it. I want to talk to my wife. Oh, I'm just not sure. You must not meet them in this frame. Because you'll notice this, if you, if you listen to your tone of voice when handling objections, if your tone sounds anything like their tone, then you've immediately joined them in their frame. And now that you're both in the doubtful frame, the call cannot proceed. The way it needs to work instead is for you to basically say, I'm so glad you brought that up. I'm so happy you want to think about it. And I'm so excited that you're entertaining the idea of working with us. I want to move forward and I'm certain that this is the right fit for you. So I cannot take that for an answer. We need to move forward. So let's, let, let's see if we can figure out what you need to know to move forward. If you meet them with that energy and you have this, you enter the frame of conviction, then they, they are forced to step out of their doubtful frame and step into the conviction one. And all objection handling is, is them being in this frame and you being in this frame. And whoever stays in their frame for long enough with enough intensity, with enough purpose and intent will win the deal. So I always say that, you either buy their doubt or they buy your conviction. And the only way that you buy their doubt is if you step into their frame. And the only way they buy your conviction is if they step into your frame. And the only way they can buy your conviction is if you stay here for long enough 
so that they could say, I want to think about it 10 times. But every time you say, I will not accept that because this is such a good fit and I can change your life. If you buy this, your life will not be the same and you will love me forever. And I really need you to move forward because, dude, I'm not going to sleep tonight if you don't buy because I can completely change your life. That problem you've got of getting appointments and like not being able to get like, dude, you just need one appointment a day. Like, you know, have a look at this. This is one of my reps calendars, right? You know, you just need one call a day. We figured out how to generate like 20, 30 a day. Like take this, this is Isaiah's calendar, like one of our reps. If we can do this for ourselves, do you think we can do this for you as well? Well, like, listen, that's Isaiah. Here's Jack's calendar. We haven't even got any slots left for the week, Mr. Prospect. Here's Sebastian's calendar, another rep. Like, you know, I understand you want to think about it, but my job here is to get you to buy this thing, because if you do, then you'll be looking at this, not this. What would you rather have? What makes more sense for your business? Oh, but I'm st I just am not certain. I completely empathize with that. And I understand because I know you've been burned before and I know you're slightly concerned and doubtful, but I need you to share my confidence. Because if you do and you do this, voila. And not only that, but what's the worst thing that happens? It's like a genuine question, not a rhetorical one. Um, well, like, you know, I just lose the money. Well, I completely understand. And that's a very fair concern, but you cannot lose the money. Because if you don't make it back, we give you a full refund. What's not to like? So that's my point. If you stay in that, you see that what I'm trying to do purposefully is create that frame and just stay in it and force them to join me because they have no other choice but to join you if you stay there for long enough. And this is what people don't understand about objection handling is they focus on the rebuttal, not the tone. So that's that basically. And like, do you know, the, the thing, the main thing is just to love objections. If an objection comes up and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, or if you don't like handling them, then you never will do it properly. Dude, if someone chucks an objection at me, it makes me like weirdly happy because I know that like objections are a vehicle for money. It's like if someone doesn't have any objections, I can't close them. Like you need objections to close them. People don't see it in the right way. So yeah, that's like just a rant, I suppose, for lack of better words, but it also depends on like, if you do your, if you fuck your questioning up, if you fuck your pitch up, if you fuck the answering of their questions up, then their objections have more strength. Like the better you do the first three parts of the call, which is question, pitch, pitch and answer, the lower the strength will be in the objection. But if you, if you mess up your questioning and your pitch is dog shit and they, they say they want to think about it, they'll be up here. But if your questioning is pristine and your pitch has so much conviction, they're basically dying to buy from you, then their conviction will be here or their doubt will be there. So anyway, that was just a rant on objection handling, but whew, I hope you guys found that useful. But the main thing to know is it's, it's frame based. If you stay in a frame of conviction for like 25 minutes and do not relent in that frame, they will join you. And it, they'll, it, the cracks will start to show by them asking questions and like, so yeah. Anyway, that was a pretty um, wild ride.